anyone want to do number one? That's me go back to your seat. Number one was multiple choice, and it was asking for the domain. So you could eliminate A and B because those are four continuous functions, which this is not, it's discrete, so it has to be C or D. Without even really looking at this, one of this says Y, one of these say Y, and the other says X. Since we're looking for domain, it can't be Y, so it's B. Now you could actually go back and match it, and. These are at negative 7, negative 3, 0, 4, and 7. So that all will work. Questions on that one? Anyone want to try number 2? For the domain of this one, we're looking for this left, for this right. So for this left, this has the arrow, so it's going to keep going up, up and left forever and ever. And then same thing for this one, up and right forever and ever. So that means our domain is all real numbers. So if you got that, good job. If you put it was between negative 5 and 2, that was incorrect. The arrows means it keeps going, so you have to imagine that that's happening. Those are not endpoints. Number 3, you had to put in your calculator, so if you did do this, do it with me so you see what happens. So in your y equals, you would type in everything after the equals, negative in parentheses, x plus 4 squared minus 3. Then you would graph it. And we're looking for the range, so we need lowest to highest. Here it looks like this is going to keep going down, but don't assume, always make sure. So I can zoom out and hit enter. And I'll do it one more time just to double check. And it looks like it's going to keep going down and down. Um, but it did have a starting point, so I'm going to go back and look at the highest point, which would be at negative 3. Is everything below that? So y is less than or equal to negative 3. Should have been your answer. Now, the first three questions are possible SOL questions. The last one, I have not seen or heard of anyone doing this, but you never know. Anyone, did anyone find a possible line segment that would work for this? So we have to draw a line segment, so a line with points at the end, that met these requirements. The domain needs to be between negative 3 and 2. And the range needs to be between negative 4 and 1. So that's just for reference. Alice, did you want to draw yours? You don't have to. You don't want to. So there were one of two ways you could have done this. 
I would say more, but I'll talk about why the others would not work. So you could have done this, drawn a line between them, start here, start here, connect them. The other way would also work. Basically, as long as it fits between those points and is diagonal, it would work. If you drew a straight horizontal or vertical line, this would work for our, um, nope, it wouldn't work for our x values, but it would work for our y values, so it limits it. And then same thing for horizontal. This works for our x values, but not our y values. So it would need to be diagonal for it to completely work. Okay, questions on that one? So if you follow along in the calendar, um, today was supposed to be intercepts, and then Wednesday was supposed to be function notation. But as we were looking at the test, we realized that should probably be switched. So today we're going to do function notation, and then Wednesday we're going to do intercepts. Friday will be your flex day. Still the same. Right, so everyone should have these notes. We're not going to get very far before lunch, but we'll start it. What we do here will be very similar to something we did at the beginning of the year, evaluating, substituting in for a value, figuring out what the answer is. It'll be very similar to that, except it'll look different for this. So we're dealing with function notation. Um, before, I think we really had expressions, not equations, but we could have equations also. But instead of this format, they're going to look like this. where the first part of this is read f of x. They mean the same thing, really. y is really reserved for equations. f of x is really reserved for functions. So usually if you're thinking input-output, that's a function. An equation, you usually solve. So that's really the only difference. They're basically the same thing. y means f of x. And you might also see other number letters instead of F. You might see G, H, J, K. That part doesn't matter. All right, so for this, to evaluate a function, we're going to substitute the value in for X. Later, we're going to talk about Y, but not at this moment. So let's say we were doing the first example. This is not multiple choice. This is three parts to the same problem. We have our equation f of x equals x plus 7. We have numbers f of 5, f of negative 1, f of negative 3. We are going to take what's inside the parentheses, that is your x value, substitute it into your function. Not here, but here. You can put it here, but it won't do anything if you put it inside the parentheses. And then you would figure out what that is. So 5 plus 7 would give us 12. So then you would write the answer in one of two ways. Either f of x equals 12, or f of 5 equals 12. These mean the same thing. One is just more specific than the other. One is saying y equals 12. The other is saying when x is 5, y equals 12. Does not matter which one you use though. Questions on that? You would write the same thing for the next one and then we'll stop. So this would be negative 1 plus 7, which would give us 6. So again, you would write it as f of x equals 6 or f of negative 1 equals 6. 
Do you see? So set it up the same way. What would be our f of x? Four. So f of x equals four, or f of negative three equals four, either or. Do we have any questions on that one? Nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like there should be more, but that's it. We're just putting in x and figuring out what y is. Now when we get to our other ones, we'll have a little bit more to do, but we'll get there in a second. Um, let's do another one. We're going to do one of these by hand. Um, we'll do one of them by hand and then I'll show you how to do it in the calculator. We'll do six. So again, we are given our x values. We're going to put this into each, put each of these into our um, equation. So this would be negative, then parentheses, negative three, outside of the parentheses, squared, plus six times negative three minus four. And then you can either do each piece by hand or put that entire thing into your calculator, figure out what that is. Do that and tell me what you get. What would our f of x equal? Blue. Negative 31. Did we all get negative 31? Yes. If you put it the other way, that's fine. I'm just writing one for now. Do we have any questions on how we got that one? Do the same thing for B. Figure out what F of negative 1 is. Make sure you write it out with negative 1 in your parentheses. Yes, It would be positive right here, but it already had a negative. So it would be negative 3 squared, so positive. Nine, but the negative on the outside would make it negative one. What is F of negative one? Not negative nine, so if you got that, double check that. Really? Another one. What it should be. Negative nine. Negative nine. Negative nine. Great. For these, if you're not sure, you can be using your calculator. Um, negative, negative one squared plus 
So even though you do it by hand, go back and double check your math and your calculator just in case you missed something, did something incorrectly. Right, and then the last one, set it up the same way. Figure out what f of 5 is. What did we get for f of 5? Take your one. one. Right? There is a way to do this. So, besides what I just did in the calculator, just to put the numbers in, there's another way we could do this. So, in your calculator, go into y equals, clear out anything that's there. We're going to type in the equation we were just working with, negative uh, x squared plus 6x minus 4. Make sure you're using the button next to alpha for x. And instead of graphing, we're going to go into the table. So I believe we did this before in the beginning of the year, but I'm doing it again this time. So once you have that in, you're going to go into the table, which is above graph, so second graph. And then we're looking for the specific values, negative 3, negative 1, and 5. So you would look for where those values are. When x is negative 3, y is negative 31. When x is negative 1, y is negative 11. And when x is 5, y is 1. So this would be an easier way to do it without doing the math for each one. You could still do the math for each one. This is another way to do it. Um, you would still need to write out this piece to show that you substituted or evaluated, started to evaluate. Then how you get the final answer does not matter. But you do it by hand in the calculator, whatever. Questions on that? Major. You were just at a different place, that's all. Alright, let's try some other. Let's go to my sticky note. Um, we're not going to do all of these because I want you to be able to practice some as well. Go to the next page. We're going to do number 11. Now, for this problem, you won't see word problems, function notation for me, like on the quiz, on the test. That doesn't mean you may or may not see it on the SOL. Well. So let's read through it. Um, anthropologists use the length of certain bones of human skeleton to estimate the height of the living person. One of these bones is the femur. To estimate the height in centimeters of a female with a femur length of x, the function h of x equals 61.41 plus 2.32 x can be used. They want us to find h of 46. So that's very similar to what we were just doing. We have our equation. We have our x value. Put this in for x and figure out what h of 46 is.
And when you think you know that answer, you can raise your hand and come back. centimeters so if you got that good job so that's the math piece of it the second piece is just seeing if you can apply or see what this is so the 168.13 what does that represent with what they give us So one of the things was the length of the femur. The other one was the height of the living person. Which one did we just find? Hannah? The height of the living person, yes. So for B, you can say that's her height in centimeters. So being able to apply what you done mathematically into words, look at the context and see what it means, you'll need to be able to do. And then this part in 12 is similar to what we're doing, but also different at the same time. For these, you're given different x values, and you have to figure out what your y value is, so that part is the same. But because it's on a graph, you're looking at when x is negative 4, where on the function, or what is your y value on the function? When x is negative 4, where on your function does your y value meet that? And what is that y value? <coughs> I'm going to outline our x and y axis. So what would that y value be when x is negative 4? Really? Is y 4 on your function? That would be your correct answer. Um, equals 2. So you're just looking for where does the function itself and the x value meet. So when x is 0, what is your y value? Where does your function go through your x-axis at? Zero. Now, 
next one is f of x equals, I'm sorry, f of 2. What is your y value? Anna? Mm -hmm. Say that again. Positive 2? Yeah. Your function go through positive 2? No. Negative 2. All right, and then the last one when uh, f of five, when x is five, what is your y value? Two Negative one. So one of your Khan Academies that's due on Friday is going to be, can you find the X or Y from the graph depending on what it's asking you? The other one is going to be very similar to what we were just doing. Um, they'll either give you X and you have to find Y or give you Y and have to find X. We haven't done the other one yet, but we will in the center. Questions on the graph? not go to the next page. So this is the last type of function notation um, when you're given x and have to find y that you'll see. Kind of like what we were doing before, but now you have a list of three or four or five numbers that you have to find all of them. Okay, so we're going to do number 10. So just as before, you're given domain values. We have to find our range values, or our y. So we're going to put each of those numbers in. You're going to set each one up as f of x equals 3 over 5 times negative 10 plus 2. f of x equals 3 over 5 times 0 plus 2. And f of x equals 3 over 5 times 5 plus 2. So we need to figure out what each one is. Whether you do that by hand, you put this in the calculator just to see what the values are, or you put it into y equals and look at the table values. Does not matter. Let's figure out what each one is. So you have the answer to the first one. Raise your hand. Sophia. I believe that one was meant before. I forgot to do this one in the head. Um, yeah. And you have the answer to the second one, Lily? Two. And then the third one. After you find those numbers, because our domain was given in set builder notation in curly brackets, we also need to write our range in set builder notation in curly brackets. So least to greatest without any repeats. So negative 4, 2, 5. That would be your final answer for these type of problems. Whereas the others, you could just write f of x equals negative 4 and be done. Questions on that one? Okay. 
after you've written this down, we're going to switch gears. We've been giving x for all these problems. have to find y, and now we're going to switch it. You don't need to rewrite this part. It's going to be the same. But now we're going to be given y and have to find x. So the difference is here, when you, when you have to find x, you'll be given f of x equals something. That should tell you, light bulb should go off, bell should go off, that I'm given y, I need to find x. Whereas in the others, you were given g of or f of some number, so I'm given x and have to find y. You're going to need to know the difference between those. We're going to do a couple of these. So let's start with number four. Setting this up, one, because this is h of x and y are the same, I could rewrite this as y equals. That way you know specifically where your y value goes because we wouldn't put it inside the parentheses. So if we're solving this first one, or finding x for the first one, 7 would replace y. After you set this up, now we just have to solve this equation to find x. How would we do that? And then, Victoria, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Both sides. So we have z, 0 equals x squared. To get rid of something that's squared, what do I do? Do I undo something that's squared? Yeah. Take the square root. And the square root of 0 is what? Yeah. 0. So we would just have one answer here. I say that because some of these might have two. But then you can write it as x equals 0 or h of 0 equals 7. Again, order does not matter, or whichever does not matter. One is saying what x equals, one is saying when x is this, y is this. Does not matter how you write it. Before we do another one, do we have any questions on that? We're going to do the same thing for b. What's nice is since there are multiple pieces, the solving method is going to be the same. Just the number that it equals is going to be different. So it's going to be 34 equals 3x squared plus 7. And then we're going to subtract 7, divide by 3, take the square root. Here, when we take the square root of both sides, when we did radicals, we just focus on one number. But because um, the square root of 9 is 3, we know that, the negatives would also work because negative 3 times negative 3 is also 9. So it would be both negative 3 and positive 3. So when you write your answer, you could say that it's both. So I'm going to put plus minus to mean that they're both. If you wrote it the other way, the h of and so on and so forth, you'd have to write two of them. h of negative 3 equals 34, and h of 3 equals 34. The only reason this has two is because it's a function that's squared, if it didn't have a square, it wouldn't have to.
questions on that one. This last one we're going to put in the calculator. Still set it up. So 82 equals 3x squared plus 7. You could still do this by hand. I'm just going to show you how to do it on the calculator so you have it. So go into your y equals... Put in your new equation or function, 3x squared plus 7. Except it's not like that. There we go. Go into your table, second graph. And we're trying to find our y value, that's 82, but you may have to also scroll up to see if there's a negative. So again, we would have two answers, negative 5 and 5. So for problems like these, if you did that in the calculator, you would just write did rest in calculator. That would be like your work. Do we have any questions on that? Alex. And what was the example thing from the side? I mean, um, the top. Oh, I didn't write this part because it's the same as the first one. Right, we're gonna do yes, nature. X or Y. So if you look here, if it says letter whatever the letter is of X equals something, you're given Y have to find X. But if it says G of some number, you're given X and have to find Y. So if it equals something X, G of X equals something, that's Y. Find X. If there's a number inside here, that's X, find Y. Let's do one more on this page. Um, number six. Let's do five instead, sorry. So I'm going to do these in the calculator. I want you to try practicing in the calculator as well. But set up each one. So if you want to rewrite it first so you know what you're putting into where. And then these are all y values, so they would all go in for y. 7 equals negative 1 half x plus 9. 14 equals negative 1 half x plus 9. And 18 equals negative 1 half x plus 9. Put that function in your calculator. To your table and look for those x values, sorry, those y values, 7, 14, 18. You may have to scroll for a bit. What would our x value be if our y value is 7? Mm -hmm. 
So when y is 7, what is our x value? I also have it up here. When y is 7, what is x? Y seven here. So y has to be seven, Lily. Four. So when y is seven, x is four. Scroll till you find y is fourteen. You may have to scroll back. Up. When y is fourteen, what is your x value? Find 18. And why is 18? What is your x value? Negative 18. So just so you see that. Okay. So you can use the calculator. You don't have to. You could do each of these by hand, but then you would need to show the work for each one. So that preference is up to you. Um, I did want to show you this on Desmos as well. So for that problem, you can put y equals, you can leave it off, it doesn't matter. If you type in your function, and I know you guys don't have decimals out, so later when you're practicing, if you need me to show you this again, I can. Go into your gear wheel. A table appears next to your function. Click it. Now, if you're given y values, decimals is kind of hard because you have to kind of play a guessing game. Um, we need 7, 14, and 18 with our y's, but we can't put numbers into y. It won't do anything. So you have to put numbers in for x that may or may not work. So here, as this keeps going down, the numbers keep getting bigger. So if I put in like negative 4, keeps getting bigger, but that's not the number I need. Negative 8, we're closer. Negative 9, negative 10. So you'd kind of have to guess to find y values, and then you could keep doing that, or you could put in the x values you found to see, did I get the same answer? If it was the other way around, though, and you were given x values and had to find y values, you would just put in whatever x values you need, and it would give you the y value. So y, you kind of have to play a guessing game. x is a little easier. Questions on five calculator, Desmos, anything like that? We're just going to do two more and then any problems you guys want to see, and then um, you'll have time to practice. So, on the next page, this is very similar to the X, but now it's switched. Now we're given Y values. And we have to find the x value. Some of these may have multiple. So for a, when y is negative 2, what is your x value? Nature. Positive 2. So that would be x equals 2. So 
when y is 0, what is your x value? Also 0. When y is 2, what are your x values? And actually, I think there were two for this one for you. Um, put it here across over here, too. So, and negative 5. So when y is 2, what are your x values? One of them is going to be a whole number. One is going to be a decimal. You can make up that decimal, whatever makes sense. So what would your x values be here? And are you raising your hand? Um, not quite at negative 1, but like something before that. Definitely negative 4, though. So that one's going to be a decimal. Make something up. As long as it makes sense, it works. Like negative 0. 0.7, negative 0.75, negative 0.8. Any of those would work. Negative 1 wouldn't work because it's not at negative 1. Negative 5 probably wouldn't work because it's not in the middle. And then when y is 4, what is your x value? Negative 2? Right. So when you get to the Khan Academy on function inputs and outputs graph, just pay attention to what it's asking you for, y or x. We're going to do one of these, and then any problems you guys want to see, go over. So let's do number 8. Just like before, we are going to have to set up each one. We are given the range, so we are putting that in for y. So we would write negative 3 equals x minus 5. 0 equals x minus 5. And 5 equals x minus 5. Now these are simple enough that you could do each one by hand. Again, it does not matter. So if we were doing it by hand, we would add 5 to both sides. What would be our x value for the first one? Nature. 2. What would be our x value for the second one? Anna. 5. And then for the third one, Victoria. Just like before, because we were given our range in curly brackets, we need to put our domain in curly brackets. Least to greatest without repeats. How would we do that? Or what would that look like? So we need to put those least to greatest in curly brackets. What would that be? Are there any, so look through all of the pages, questions you want to see, go over, have questions about?
For this one, if I'm given g of 4, are we given x or y? x. So that means we have to find y, which means we're just putting these numbers in. And then evaluating or simplifying to see what each one is. we have 4 minus 16 inside the absolute value. That will give us negative 12 inside the absolute value. Absolute value might be positive. What would the next one be? And then the last one. two problems. If you finish these relatively quickly, you'll have time to do Khan Academy. If not, you'll need to do them either on your own time to come to see me later or whatever. Um, so from the first set of problems, number 11. And then on the last set of numbers or set of problems, number 13. So do both of those. You guys can work together. When you finish, raise your hand and I'll come back.